But let's go to one species of ants that are quite interesting in this sense um, because they do agriculture. These are quite interesting uh, species. There are several species of leaf cutters. Their ability to, you can see here, an ant carrying a piece of uh, leaf. So what they do, they simply cut leaves from trees and transport them to their nests. Um, they then sort of chew these and produce a mulch uh, on which they grow fungi. And fungi then, uh, because they have a digestive system beyond the digestive system, cannot digest leaves. They feed fungi, and fungi then produce food for the entire ant colony. That's the ant agriculture. These are quite interesting creatures because they live in South uh, and Central America, usually in forests, and native people recognize them quite easily. They call them um, ants with parasols, uh, something like that. So um, science behind these leaf cutter ants is, is really well developed. I mean, the, you can see here a paper in which they, um, a group of scientists sequenced the genome of you know, one species of these uh, leaf cutter ants and demonstrated that they sort of live in symbiosis with the fungus. This is known as oblica, obligate uh, symbiosis. In other words, these ants wouldn't be able to survive without fungi to basically convert that leaf biomass that they collect into food for them. So here's um, one sort of photograph of the fungal garden produced by the leaf, leaf cutter. So I think you can recognize here, it looks white. Uh, you can recognize some ants there. So we know that this sort of agriculture is about 60 million year old, the ant agriculture. And you can see the names of some species from the genera Atta and Acromermex. These ant species, leaf cutters, but the funguses from the genus Leocoagaricus. So they establish symbiosis, but actually there are some bacteria involved and some other species. So this type of symbiosis that's useful for both partners, it's, it's called mutualism. And in the ant societies, and this is what E.O. Wilson demonstrated, there is quite a clear division of labor. They are very, very social. You know, their societies are very complex, very sophisticated, similar to human societies, division of labor. You can see in this picture uh, several different types of ants that form the uh, leaf cutter ant societies. Some are very, very small. You can see that, that their size is small. The, these are essentially workers that tend gardens. And those big ants are soldiers. And, you know, they di divide labor and work together. You know, some of them directly participating in the agriculture. The others defend societies or do some other uh, works uh, like making borders. I, I've discussed this concept of ant cities. So essentially, there's, you know, sociality is in some way similar to our own. Um, and here you can see the size of one ant city. In this picture, this is a group of scientists who try to excavate the ant nest somewhere in South America. And what they've done here they simply selected a leaf cutter ant nest randomly. Then they pour a liquid concrete into it and let it solidify. And this process lasted for about a month. And then the concrete solidified, then, then they excavated and tried to look at the structure. So you can see how big this structure is. It's about eight, maybe more meters wide. It's about three to four meters deep, and those round shaped objects that you see, these are basically fungal, you know, the gardens inside. So, so the size of one, let's call it a building in their city, the size of it is the size of human head, roughly. And inside, they do sort of farming. So, you know, all those small farmers that you've seen, uh, you know, tending. Um, understanding those fungi 
actually they uh, have very sophisticated farming skills so they know how when to feed fungi they know when to use water for them give them water they use their own feces to fertilize the gardens etc so they are true true farmers they have very similar farming skills to human farmers so really a huge construction of these ant cities uh, and here we getting into and animal husbandry. So they don't only do farming in the um, sort, sort of equivalent of uh, humans farming plants. They also do animal husbandry. Has anyone seen something like this before? I mean, if you go to any garden, find any sort of green plant, it's quite likely that you will find ants that are tending these small animals. Do you know what these, um, so you can clearly recognize an ant there. So uh, some people call these aphids. So what they, they call them ant, ant cows. What they do, uh, here's a better picture perhaps. So here's, uh, you know, one aphid or two of them. So they uh, sort of suck the liquid from soft plants and they produce something that's very sweet and gooey. It's called um, nectar. And what ants do, then they stimulate the aphid bodies using their antennas to sort of secrete the droplets of this nectar. Ants collect the droplets, you know, in their mouths and transport them to, uh, you know, their nest and use this as a, as, as a food, as a source of energy. The symbiosis, mutualistic symbiosis they established with aphids is long-lasting, very stable, and both partners are uh, dependent on it because aphids actually get protection. They aren't protect them from very, not only from attackers, but also protect them from diseases. For example, they would identify fungi and bacteria and remove them. And in return, on, on get uh, this uh, very nutritious uh, nectar from them. Uh, but the agriculture is not only present in the animal world, insect, you know, aphids, etc. Uh, actually, single cell organisms like amoebas or, and fungi, they farm bacteria. And here you have two sorts of examples. There is a picture of amoeba, amoeba this uh, gray structure and a picture of fungi, this bluish um, structure on top, and the bacteria are in the other corner. So amoeba called Dictyostelium farms one kind of bacterium called Burkholderia, and also uh, there is Fungus morchella farming uh, a different bacterium. So essentially, you know, the, you see the agriculture in the biosphere is widespread, and what I want to do is to give you more examples of this mutualistic symbiosis between different species responsible for the agriculture. Uh, another species that do, you know, species uh, of these ambrosia beetles, they do agriculture in a similar way to ants. They use fungi. Another species or another group of organisms are termites. These are larger than ants. Uh, th there is a species of termite or several species that are called macrothermus. They live in um, probably Africa and Australia, and they use one fungus, uh, termitomyces, to, you know, they farm them. Termites use usually plants or wood to eat, and um, then uh, fungi basically take that food product, they, they, they can't digest and turn that into food for them. And on the other side, you can see a big termite mound. You've seen this picture before in, in, uh, in the first week. So these termite mounds are full of places where they do agriculture. 